Okay guys, so let's talk about love. And I want to begin this video by breaking a myth that so many people have about love. And that is that love is something that happens naturally and it's something you don't need to work on. <laughs> that is a lie. That is a Hollywood lie, the happily ever after story. Love is something that needs to be worked on hard. Love isn't some, some magical entity that just pops into existence. Love is a skill, and like all skills, it needs to be trained and developed. And in this video, I'm going to outline my five top principles for how you can express more love and receive more love in your lives. How you can be a better partner and enjoy a deeper and more meaningful relationship with the person you really care about. And right off the bat, number one is you have to value their dreams. And value their dreams as much as you value your own. One of the reasons that I fell in love with my partner was because when she told me about her vision, her dreams, her her concept of, of the world and her goals and what she wanted to do, man, I respected that. I fell in love with her vision. It was, it was something that was grand and magical. And it was something that I wanted to happen. And it's something that I want to help her to achieve in her life. And so I'd say to you is, do you even know your partner's dreams? They're, they're real, grand dreams. You might know what they want to achieve in the next couple of years. You might know their career goals, but do you know their number one dream? If they could wave the magic wand and make something happen, do you know what that is? And if you don't, that's a question you need to start asking. Because if you can't value your dreams as value your partner's dreams as much as your own, then there's going to be an imbalance in the relationship. And you're going to prioritize, wittingly or unwittingly, your things above theirs. And that's not the way a partnership should be. You should be working together on both of your dreams in order to make both of them a reality. Both of them are grand. Both of them are noble. And one of the reasons that we come together in partnership is because it makes us stronger. It gives us two minds, it gives us two brains, it gives us two emotional centers through which to make things happen. So this leads nicely onto the second point, which is to discuss things more regularly. Have deep, meaningful discussions with your partner. So prioritize that quality time with each other. Don't make every night a movie night. Don't be sitting there in front of the, the laptop or the TV. Don't be sitting there on your phones. Really isolate yourselves so that you can enjoy some quality time. Whether that's going for walks in the park, sit it, sitting together on, on a bench, being here on a, on a sofa just cuddling and, and talking about things. And it doesn't always have to be about the meaning of life and what you would do if you were Prime Minister, but asking each other opinions and perspectives, you know, honey, what do you think about this? Or, or baby, what do you think about that? Just these simple things to, to understand your partner better. And one of, the, one of the crises that happens in relationships, one of the, the times where we have conflict is because there's been a lack of understanding. And that lack of understanding has, has come to a head and it's created some friction and some conflict. And one of the ways that we can prevent this is by having that deep understanding of each other. And it's when you have these discussions, it's when you open up and elaborate with each other that, that yeah, you'll start to find out about their dreams, their vision, their perspective. And when you find out these things, you can begin to truly understand them. And with that understanding, you then learn how to be a better partner. And now, one of the, the key skills that I consider, um, skill number three, is, is giving. And when you have that understanding of what your partner wants and needs and wants to see in the world, then you're able to give to that need. You're able to give to those desires. And what I'd say is, is give openly and give without, give without intention. So something that happens in relationships in general, and I'll use the example of the bedroom here, is that you give because you want to receive back. So you do something for your partner with a mind that they'll be indebted to you. And again, this isn't always wittingly, sometimes it's, it's unwittingly, it's, it's just something that's been ingrained in our consciousness in society. And that is that we never do anything unless we're going to get something out of it. And if you take that mentality into your relationships, then that can also create friction. If you're never 
giving openly and fully to the other person, how can you ever expect to be given fully and open to back? So something that I always try and do in my relationship is, is find ways to give. Whether that be a physical object, something that I, I know she'll appreciate, whether that is just giving your time and attention. Those are our two most precious resources in life. And nothing says you value someone like giving them your time and attention. Focusing on what they're telling you, what they're doing, being present in that moment with them. When you're telling someone a story or, or trying to express your opinion to someone, don't you really value it when they're actually listening to you? When they are fully absorbed and engrossed with what you have to say? Well, give that gift to your partner and they'll certainly appreciate it more and it'll certainly help you to be a better partner to them. So, moving on to number four, which is speak about them with pride. And this kind of links back to the first point we talked about, valuing their dreams. If you're not proud of your partner, then <laughs> why the heck are you with them? You know, if I'm out at a, a networking event or, or I'm speaking to some, some friends when it's, it's just me, the, and something comes up in the conversation that's related to my partner, then, then I'll talk about them. And I'll talk about her with pride. I'll, I'll talk about what she's doing in her work or what she believes or, or what she said to me, the way that she's helped me. I speak about my partner with pride. I'm, I'm proud to be with my partner. And some of that pride comes from knowing about her dreams and, and knowing how much that means to her or the understanding that we've gained through our deep discussions with each other. And that pride is something that, if I express that outside the relationship, then, then I'm bringing that into the relationship. I'm, I'm, every action that I'm doing is demonstrating my pride to my partner. And if you're proud of your partner and if you express that pride to your partner, then, then they will feel that. And, and they will feel the power of that energy. And that power, the more powerful emotions that you can put into your, into your relationship, then the stronger that bond becomes. And pride is, pride is a powerful one. And if you can have more pride for your partner, have more, have more joy and belief in, in who they are as a person, then that will help you to have a better partnership and a better relationship. And so my fifth and final tip is, is a, a simple one, and it's, it's not as, as deep or, or extravagant maybe as the others, but to be playful. You know, all of the, the previous tips, they're all, you know, serious, tangible things to do, but the fifth one is just, just have some fun together. You know, life is, life is short and your relationship might be short. You know, we're not all destined to be together for, for decades and decades and, and celebrate all the, the fancy anniversaries. Sometimes the time that you have with someone is fleeting and most relationships have, have a timer on them. In fact, all relationships have a timer on them, whether that be an impending breakup, an impending death, or maybe both of your impending deaths. You know, you never know when that partnership is going to come to an end. And if you can't enjoy the time spent in that partnership, then, then why were you together in the first place? So my, my final tip is, is just to be playful and silly with each other. Man, me and my partner have some deep, meaningful conversations, but my Lord, we have some stupid and trivial ones as well. There's some things that we say together that we would never be comfortable saying outside of that circle because we would just get socially ostracized. People would think we were weird and stupid. But that's part of the fun of being in a relationship is that you can be weird and stupid with each other and, and you still value, respect and appreciate each other despite all the weirdness, all the stupidity. You can just fully open yourself up and, and not have a care and stop being so goddamn serious all the time. And I think that is such a healthy component to have in a relationship. And if you are going to spend a long time together, if you are going to have those fancy anniversaries and the kids and the grandkids, then you better make sure that you're having fun through all that time that you're spending together. And just having that principle of, of be playful, be stupid is, is a great way to have that fun. So which of those principles do you think 
you would most need in your relationship? What do you think is, is something that you need to, to really cement the partnership that you've got at the moment? Maybe it's having that deep conversation. Maybe it's giving more. Whatever it is, I want you the next time that you see your partner to, to try and open that up. If you're going around for, for a date, for dinner, whatever it is, and you need some deep, meaningful conversations, then, then start opening it up. Start asking questions on their opinion, their perspective. And, and if this is something that you haven't really been doing, then, then man, I think your partner will really value that. They'll, they'll value this, this new, exciting and deep direction that you're taking the partnership in. And ultimately, it will help your relationship be healthier and stronger. So folks, until next time, remember to love inwardly and shine outwardly.